Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Now, when it comes to flat earthers, there is one word you will often hear from them, which is level. Where they will say things like, it's called sea level, not sea curve. Or they say the earth is flat because water finds its level and then they post memes like this, claiming that on a globe the Suez Canal would curve down by almost 10,000 feet. Or they talk about planes in straight and level flight and how they're holding a flight level, which they then claim would not be possible on a globe. Well, there's even been three Flat Earth movies released entitled Level. And the crux of their argument is claiming that level is straight, not curved. Basically, that level means horizontal, which is not actually the case. It's a common misconception that, to be fair, can be a little tricky to wrap your head around, but the term level is referring to heights, such as levels of a building and how you can go up and down to different levels. Level crossings on train tracks are so called because the road is crossing the train track at the same height, rather than using tunnels or bridges to go above and below each other. Or level can also be used to describe abilities and difficulties, such as in sport. Are players or teams the same or different levels compared to their opponents? Or like how today's sponsor, Brilliant.org, group their classes and courses into different levels based on difficulty. Which is what helps make it such a great tool for online learning. If you're new to a topic, you can start at the lower levels and build up gradually to the more complex aspects. Or, if you're already familiar with the topic, you can jump ahead to the more advanced levels to either expand your knowledge or refresh your memory on some of the topics. Meaning, there's something for everyone to learn. Add that to how they use interactive animations within their classes, I find makes learning much more fun and visual, and thus more effective for me. Even just a few minutes a day, it works wonders, and thanks to its app, those few minutes can be even while you're out and about. Meaning I haven't missed a day of using Brilliant for more than two and a half years. Start learning for free by visiting my link brilliant.org forward slash Dave McKeegan and doing so will get you 20% off their annual subscription. Now, as mentioned, level is often used to reference height, which incidentally is what flight level is referring to. It's talking about the altitude of the plane rather than the pitch of the nose. For example, the instruction to a pilot might be climb and maintain flight level 350, which means climb to 35,000 feet and stay at that altitude. But most planes will actually hold a slightly nose up attitude when they're flying at a constant height. So straight and level flight is not referring to the pitch of the plane. Straight is referring to the heading, such as maintaining a heading of 270 degrees is flying straight rather than turning left or right. And the level part means to hold that assigned flight level altitude. Like I say, planes frequently have a slightly nose up angle of attack when they are actually in straight level flight. Meaning level in that context has nothing to do with the pitch of the plane and thus means the idea that straight and level flight can't work on a globe is wrong. It seems flat earthers are conflating level and horizontal and assuming that level means flat when they say things like it's sea level not sea curve. To which my usual response is to say it's not sea flat either. Level does not refer to how flat the sea is, it refers to its relative height. If level meant flat, then we wouldn't need horizontal. They'd be the same thing. But, I mean, why would a flat earther listen to what I have to say? So instead, here is the explanation from the opening pages of chapter 2 in this textbook, Surveying for Engineers. Chapter 2, Leveling. Leveling is the name given to the process of measuring the difference in elevation between two or more points. In engineering surveying, leveling has many applications and is used at all stages in construction projects from initial site survey through to the final setting out. 
In practice, it's possible to measure the heights to better than a few millimetres when levelling, and this precision is more than adequate for height measurements on the majority of civil engineering projects. Section 2.1 Level and Horizontal Lines The term level line and horizontal line are used frequently and need to be carefully defined. A level line or surface is defined as a line along which all points are the same height. Because the Earth is curved, level lines are also curved, as shown in figure 2.1. Consequently, when using optical or digital levels to determine height differences, measurements should be taken from curved level lines. A horizontal line is one which is normal to the direction of gravity, the vertical, at a particular point, such as P in figure 2.2. Horizontal lines or surfaces are therefore tangential to level lines or surfaces at individual points. When an optical or digital level is set up correctly, it defines a horizontal line for measurement of height differences, and this would seem to contradict the need to measure along curved level lines. However, for most survey work, the difference between a horizontal line and level line, called curvature, is small enough to be ignored and it can be assumed that level and horizontal lines are the same, end quote. Now, you'll notice that it states for most survey work, not all survey work. And this is where we can actually pretty easily show how to measure the curve of Earth, but that's a topic for a different video. This video is just aiming at understanding what level really means. And by the way, this textbook was written by two professional surveyors for the sole purpose of training new surveyors, the very people who use this stuff on a daily basis to measure the Earth. And yet there are flat earthers out there who not only argue that level means flat, but they try to argue that level, horizontal and vertical are all words that can only be associated with a flat Earth and couldn't possibly exist with a globe. And if you try to use those words in a discussion, they claim you're just acknowledging the Earth is flat, when in reality, they just struggle to grasp how surveyors measure. Mind you, they also struggle to understand the concept of how to write a book. So, the word level does not define the Earth. The term level is defined by the Earth. The terms horizontal, vertical, and level can absolutely fit with the globe. And as highlighted in this book, Vertical is the direction of gravity. For surveyors in the past, the first step for setting up their equipment was using a plumb bob to align their theodolite with vertical. And vertical absolutely can work on a globe. Sure, some will argue that you don't have up and down on a globe, you have in and out, but that would only be valid if you weren't on the globe and instead you were looking at it from a far distance. For anyone standing on the globe, your frame of reference shifts towards the centre of Earth being down and away from it being up. And horizontal doesn't reference the Earth at all. It's simply 90 degrees to the vector of vertical. That's how you find horizontal, is you find vertical first and base it off that. And level is remaining at a constant altitude. Now, let's address some of these memes that butcher the concepts of level. For example, I saw this meme about the Suez Canal, because you'll often hear flat earthers say water finds its level, except the level of water is referring to its depth, not its flatness. If you pour water into a container, its level increases. So water of equal depth all the way around the globe would still be level. For example, here I have a little squishy globe, and I have some pins and I'm going to place a piece of tape around the top of each of the pins in the same spot, and then I'm going to place each of the pins into the globe up to the tape line. This means each pin head is the exact same distance above the surface of the globe, meaning they're all level with each other in relation to the squishy globe. Obviously not level with each other in relation to the giant globe that we're standing on, but in relation to the squishy globe, they are. Then you'll have some flat earthers that claim the earth is measured flat because eye level is parallel to sea level. Except again, level is based on heights. 
So eye level is referring to your height of eye. If your eyes are six feet above sea level and then you place another object that is also six feet above sea level, then that object is at your eye level. If you had a conga line of people 100 kilometers long and each person's eyes were six feet above sea level, then each person's eyes would be at the same level and the line through them would be running parallel to sea level, just like this line of pins through the squishy globe. You can have parallel lines that aren't straight. Just look at train tracks. They always run parallel to each other because they're always the same distance apart, yet they can curve in order to change direction. I presume these people think eye level is referring to line of sight rather than height of eye. And this is where I find the statement water finds its level to be a bit daft. I mean, for starters, water is inanimate, so it isn't finding anything. Water molecules are merely reacting to the forces of being applied to them, namely gravity and the resistance of the other water molecules surrounding them until they reach an equilibrium. But then water doesn't have a level. There is no single level for water. Sea level we regard as the base level, but even the level of the sea is not constant, given that we have waves and tides. The level of the sea in any one location is constantly changing, and when some locations are at low tide, others are at high tide. So the sea is never truly level. We instead have to use mean sea level, which takes the average sea level of a location across a period of time. Anything that is further from the center of the Earth than mean sea level, we say has a higher elevation. Anything closer to the center of the Earth has a lower elevation. But now, with regards to this meme about the Suez Canal and the idea that it has to curve down, up and down is in relation to elevation. Suggesting that a canal on a globe needs to curve down is saying that the elevation of the canal needs to decrease. Well, a canal dropping 10,000 feet below sea level on a globe would wind up underground. The Suez Canal needs zero elevation change because its elevation is being measured from mean sea level at each point along its path. It starts and ends at sea level. But when they constructed it, they dug the canal to a depth that was below mean sea level. So the water was able to flow freely through the canal. The Panama Canal, by comparison, is also man-made, but that does have an elevation change. The start and ends are both at sea level. It connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, but the land in between is much higher than sea level. A stretch of the canal actually uses the Gatun Lake, which is about 26 meters above mean sea level. So had they just dug a canal into the ocean, the lake would have emptied itself. They would have had to have dug a canal that was lower than mean sea level, but that was just too big of a job. So instead, they used locks at either end to create different levels of water. But this ties us nicely in with elevation profiles that flat earthers also seem to struggle with. Here is the elevation profile for the Panama Canal. And I've seen flat earthers argue that because this is drawn as a straight line, then the earth must be flat. Even though you can get elevation profiles using Google Earth, which is literally displaying them on a globe. Changing the format to a graph that has a straight axis does not define the shape of the object that's being portrayed by the graph. I mean, here is telemetry data from a race car, with the graph displaying the RPM of the engine. RPM literally being revolutions, i.e. the crankshaft going around in a circle. And yet, the graph is portraying this movement as a straight line. Or an ECG of somebody's heartbeat. Their heart isn't literally jumping up and down in their chest. The elevation profile is taking a reading of the elevation in relation to mean sea level at various points along its path, in just the same way that I can measure the distance of the pinheads above the surface of a globe. And if I plot those distances on a graph as distances above surface, it will draw a straight line. They just present it as a flat graph because it's easier to understand. 
Same reason that they've stretched the vertical profile by a factor of 80 to 1. Because trying to show a 26 meter elevation change across 82,000 meters of canal with a 1 to 1 ratio would be impossible to see unless your screen is the size of a bus. Another thing you'll often hear flat earthers say is the horizon rises to eye level. Now this is usually said when talking about rising up in altitude and they claim the horizon rises up with you, which simply is not the case. The only way the horizon can be seen to rise to eye level is if the earth were flat and you could see infinitely far across it. This is because if your eyes are one meter off the ground and you were to look straight out and you had a target that was also one meter off the ground and you moved it away from you, the target will always be one meter off the ground. So on a flat earth, it would remain exactly in the center of your eye line. The ground will always be one meter below your line of sight, but the further away that that target moves, the angular size of that one meter gap between the target and the ground will get smaller and smaller until it reaches an infinite distance where the angular size just becomes too small to measure. And if you go to a higher altitude, it wouldn't change that. Y you could be at 100 kilometers in the air and at an infinite distance, the angular size of that 100 kilometer gap between the target and the ground would still be too small to measure and thus the horizon would still appear in line with your eye level. But flat earthers acknowledge we can't see infinitely far across their flat earth, which is why we can't see Everest from Kilimanjaro. So wherever the horizon is, is the limit to your vision. And that limit will be reached before the angular size of a very big drop becomes too small. And obviously on a globe, the higher up you go, the more and more the horizon will be below your eye level because the ground is curving away from you. In both instances, a globe or a flat earth without an infinite vision, the horizon will not rise to eye level as you go higher. Where I think the confusion comes in with this is that if you're in a plane and you're looking out of the window, you have no frame of reference to look at other than the horizon. Are you looking perfectly horizontal or not? You never really know. You need a frame of reference. You need something to measure against to know for sure. So if you're just sat in a plane at 35,000 feet and you look out of the window towards the horizon, your eye is immediately drawn to the horizon. That's not the horizon is rising to your eye level. That is your eye line is dropping to the horizon. If you want to be able to verify just how bad your eyes are at being able to determine exactly where horizontal is, here's a fun little test for you. Standing up, measure the distance between the floor to the center of your eye. Now, take a pen or a piece of blue tack or something as a marker and go and stand arm's distance away from a blank wall. And just look wherever you think directly ahead is. Stick out your arm and put a mark on the wall where you think is exactly the same height as your eye. That would be looking perfectly horizontal. Then, take your tape measure and measure the distance from the ground to that marker. And unless your marker is exactly the same height as your eye, you've not actually looked at horizontal because your eye doesn't really know where horizontal truly is. But I think that's going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please do consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.